Hey everyone, welcome to Saturday Night Popcorn. This is Jason. And this is Kai, and we have another great discussion for you today. Uh, the movie of the day is The Rocketeer from 1991. It's a continuation of our not-so-super superhero films. We had one a few months ago, but for August of 2024, or September, ooh, September of 2024, we decided to bring it back because there were more non-superhero super superhero, superhero films that we hadn't watched. So I want to give everyone a spoiler warning before we get into it, but it is a 30-plus-year-old film, but just in case you haven't seen it, uh, yeah, be warned, and we'll get into it after Jason Reeves' uh, description of the film. Yeah, and the, 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 the ending is shocking with Nazis. <laughs> like how every 90s film ends. <laughs> Dude, this, this, yeah, this movie, this is one of those movies. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, here's a, here's a description of The Rocketeer 1991 is a thrilling adventure set in 1938 Los Angeles. The story follows Cliff Secord. Uh, a daring stunt pilot who stumbles upon a prototype jet pack uh, hidden by gangsters. With the help of his mechanic friend, PV, Cliff dons the jet pack and becomes a high flyer, high flying hero known as the Rocketeer. As he navigates the skies, Cliff, uh, Cliff must uh, evade Nazi spies, the FBI, and the Hollywood actor turned villain, Neville Sinclair, who all seek the powerful device. Uh, alongside his girlfriend Jenny, Cliff fights to keep the jetpack out of the wrong hands and protect his loved ones. Directed by Joe Johnson and starring Billy Campbell, uh, Jennifer Connelly, which looks complete, I don't know, just completely different. Uh, and Timothy Jennifer Dalton. Connelly, yeah, right? But it's like crazy. <laughs> but she does, yeah. <laughs> uh, Timothy Dalton. The the Rocketeer combines classic Pulp Fiction elements with the excitement of early aviation. Yeah, it's just shocking to see like mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Connelly and like I think I looked up; she was born in like 1970. So mm -hmm. 1991, when this movie came out, she was 21 years old, 22 yeah. maybe. It's like crazy. I just the funny thing because I didn't know she was in this. Like going into it, I just watched her in this uh, Dario Argento film, Phenomena. I think it's Phenomena it's from like the 80s. And I'm like, damn, like she looks like a kid. And then to see this, it's like, dang, she still looks like a kid, just a little bit older. But then to know how she looks now, it's like, who is this person? Yeah, right. But like, it's like, man, you like look her up, and it's like, all right, like she still looks like you can tell that's Jennifer mm -hmm. Connelly and everything. Yeah. But it's it's amazing. <laughs> and to get like a like a like a Disney film, like this is weird because like it's in the doesn't... '90s, Disney was like a totally different company. <laughs> yeah. Well, the fact that like I don't. I want to say Roger Rabbit was kind of that fine line as like a Disney film because we watched it on Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. So this and uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit are on that same plane of if you were a kid growing up now, you would never suspect these two films to be Disney films. But us growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, these fit the Disney mold because they didn't know what the hell they were doing other than like their animated shows and films. Yeah, and it's like it they they had a little bit more violence. You're you're kind of shocked mm -hmm. how like sometimes like a little bit vi like violent this like even this movie, The Rocketeer and everything, like there's gangsters, there's Nazis and FBI. And FBI and there's people like gangsters and FBI shooting at each other in the yeah. beginning of the film and everything. And then yeah, there's like that end. like overall sex like I don't know if like Harvey Weinstein was like in the back of everyone's minds even back then where like they still had that like oh I'm a film producer let me uh or like I'm let a me, film actor let me uh let me uh get this young person and and maybe show yeah, her to the was, top and everything I was like that was awkward as hell yeah Definitely Patty turned Disney to me she's like this is friendly, weird yeah. this is like like hard to watch <laughs> but because I'm guessing you hadn't seen this either right no never seen this and this was. I felt like growing up, I watched every Disney film, but I somehow didn't watch this. And yeah, that's like my first note was like, how did I never watch this? I remember seeing the posters everywhere and like hearing of it, but it just never crossed my path of like, oh, hey, we got to watch The Rocketeer. And even myself right now, like I'm kind of getting into like reading a lot of comic books lately. And, and this is based off a graphic novel. 
And I kind of want to look up, like, I, I totally forgot, like, who actually created the graphic novel and who published it. Because, like, you know how, like, like Marvel and DC have, like, basically the same characters? Like, yes. it's just, like, a little bit slight difference. Like They tweak the name a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, the coloring and stuff. And, like, but, like, this totally has, like, Iron Man vibes and everything. Yes. Like, just, like, they yes. tried to find a way to do an Iron Man. But also because like same thing, like Iron Man has no super superpowers. Tony Stark mm. is a normal dude. He's just super He's rich. Super rich. Yeah. Yeah. And then this, he just stumbles upon it and and just kind of like has It's this, like handed to him. Basically. He's just like, oh, <laughs> we found this thing and now I'm gonna use it and become a superhero. And his his Alfred is like really good at like being an engineer and stuff and like mm-hmm. knows how to make this thing. And like eventually, like you see the end, he has the 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 plans of how to make this and he's like he's probably gonna make another one i'm surprised i wonder if they like had that ending and be like oh maybe we'll get a second second one one. (laughs) yeah because i wouldn't like this but i think my 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 gripe with this was like the story wasn't anything special it's super basic uh, yeah hey this this person stumbled on this rocket they decided to use it to keep it away from the bad guys and now they're evading these bad guys in order for them to not get it like it's a pretty basic story there's some love there's some pain in it but i think if they would have had a second one and they kind of dove into hey they made a a a better prototype or a more uh streamlined version of the rocket that would be pretty cool to follow yeah it almost kind of like it 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 bodes as a good sequel because it's like all Mm -hmm. right like we found this thing my engineer or my my buddy next to me can build a better one and stuff and like yeah. and, and and build with like a whole suit around it i'm assuming that's like sort of the the play that they're going for yeah i agree with you where it's like watching the film there's a weird mishmash of things where it's mm-hmm. like there's mobsters there's nazis i totally think there was no need for the nazis because Yo, you didn't yeah, know no. Like did you didn't nothing. know Nazis until like the very last thirty minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like the Howard Hughes tie-in was kind of cool, but kind of that was like, cool. Okay, I guess. But yeah, the, yeah, the Nazi thing was like, why this isn't needed? Yeah, I guess it like in the, in the times like you're, if you're trying to create like a period piece, I guess so. But like, yeah. I think if you you want to make something that like that was the problem with like I think like Indiana Jones. Star Wars is basically a Nazi film uh, because yeah. the Empire is basically the Nazis. It was just like it, they're they're almost like the Russians nowadays. I think we we talk about it where it's like mm. the Russians are the new Germans. Yeah. <laughs> like Honestly, they're just easy yeah. to be like, oh, every bad guy is either Russian, oh, a Nazi. <laughs> so it, it was it was a weird mishmash of things. And then like when you get to the point where like the mobsters are like supporting uh, uh, Sinclair. At the end, and you're, I was like, mobsters would not like no. be cool with being with Nazis and stuff. And so no. it's like, and then it, it does play out the way you think, like, oh, they find out, like, oh, he's a Nazi and stuff, and like, mm-hmm. there's this, and and he, <laughs> the mobsters are true Americans. <laughs> <laughs> we must fight. We must yeah. save. Uh, we must Alongside save the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> they, so it was weird. It was it was beautiful though. Like it was a very pretty film for it to be a Disney film. But yeah, that story was not it. Yeah, I would like to touch on that where it's like the they they did kind of hit it with that noir look. Like mm-hmm. there was a lot of places I, I wrote down that a, a lot of the shots sometimes, like even in that the the diner scene where he's like taking the girlfriend Jennifer Connie out like mm-hmm. to the same diner that he goes to like 24 seven uh on a Shh, date. We're not supposed to know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but it's a like, special it, night for them. It looked like there was like a sense of like smoke all around them like it gave that that kind of atmosphere that like you knew back then everyone's like smoking Mm -hmm. like a packet at a time and everything (laughs) but it 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 was a yeah like i agree with you where it's like it was a very good looking and back then in 91 do you think that was more the film that they chose it was definitely yeah i think it was the lighting in the film Mm because you can tell there were moments even in the exterior shots when he's like flying around in the rocket and like that's what really caught my eye when he was flying around. You saw the sky, 
But then when they would cut into an interior, you would see like light shining on one portion of his face. And then it would, you would have like a dark shadow on the other side. And most films weren't doing that back then. So yeah, I think they were really uh, aware of how they wanted to light this to portray that noir feel. Which is interesting because like uh, everyone's discussion of Disney nowadays is that they kind of have a co- cookie cutter. Cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. And if you allow people to kind of like do period pieces, but also do a period piece in like, or like do a film in their way, you have a cinematographer yeah. that's actually doing their job properly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's, it's hard to like, look at this film and you're like man this is from the 90s like it, things look dated like the cgi is not the greatest but like it was in 91 like they're showing a dude flying around Which and probably blew people's mind yeah and, but then also like it like you're able to kind of see that like oh cgi on top of like actual like running film of like mm-hmm. oh the plane going and stuff and it looked it was decent i think my one gripe was in terms of like like production and and the way things were like the cgi was something to look past because it was from 91 it was like whatever yeah. like like we i still play video games from like the like early 2000s or whatever like no one really cares what things look like as long as it kind of goes to the story yeah uh but the the bad guy that like folds people in half like the dude's oh, the like big dude? yeah. makeup and everything like his Terrible. mouth barely moved <laughs> it, he reminded me of um the at the end of who framed roger rabbit oh, okay when uh what christopher whatever uh, has all the uh all the prosthetics on yeah right like instantly and, and I was like, the, oh god this is terrible yeah it, it it's and it's like you see that it's like like they just got a giant person basically mm-hmm. and and just put the, like all this prosthetics on and and so it was that was kind of hard to watch but it's like you can tell the dude's yeah. like struggling kind of like being able to convey anything like um, so that that this, was my biggest gripe with that. Made me laugh. Yeah, every time you would come on the screen, <laughs> I was laughing. That and the uh, when they're at that banquet or like that hall or whatever, and the Rocketeer's flying around in the building, and then he gets like caught. He's like, "How do I get out of here?" And he looks up, and there's that uh, stained glass. Like uh-huh. That whole scene, how that played out. Like, how did they not catch this Rocketeer <laughs> in a building? And then he's able to escape, and now you're shooting into this. Like what? Yeah, and yeah. they're like spraying bullets and everything, yeah. and then like no one else one, hit. One ricochet comes off. The- hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how bad is your aim? <laughs> well, there are monsters and Nazis, so uh, I guess they're all bad. Off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like this was a fun movie. I think. Uh, it was a fun, like I think I say that with a lot. Like it was enjoyable to watch, uh, mm-hmm. but with with um, the story being super like semi like fairly basic, you're yeah. like almost kind of like all right, well, like even the movie being a, an hour and like forty minutes, you're it's it's lengthy. It feels you can feel the length to it, yeah. and I think that's because the story's basic. I didn't like I felt the length of it, but it wasn't until like the end of the film where it's like, okay, we can wrap this shit up. Like, why are we still a long time ago? This? <laughs> yeah. I think I got like to maybe an hour, maybe an hour, an hour 15 in. And I was like, okay, this could be done now. And it still had another 30 minutes. So I like paused it and like walked away for a little bit. Like, all right, I'll finish this in a bit. I probably would have been happy if it would have ended at that banquet where it's like, oh, yeah. like he like flew away with Jennifer Connelly's character yes. and almost like a Spider-Man style. And then he like hands over the the, the thing to to the mm-hmm. FBI or whatever and stuff. And it, it, that's that seemed a better because as it kept going after that, you're like, all right, like this. We it's can end this. Weirder. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, the whole battle, the blimp, the, yeah. the free plane he got from Howard Hughes. It's like, all right, this all could have been wrapped up ten minutes ago, but now that that like knowing what the the film summary that we watched uh, that we read too, and then mm-hmm. kind of like the 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 movies based around like early uh, aeronautics and like flight. Do you think if like the Hindenburg didn't happen with the the blimp, 
uh or like a a, a tragedy like the Hindenburg for the blimp. Mm. You think we would have been using that like as yeah. as like a I, like a main I thought that was the plan. I thought the plan for the Hindenburg was to like showcase like hey, this is a, a great aeronautical uh piece of technology. And I thought we were kind of gearing at least just from history being like like we learned throughout school. I thought that was like the next frontier. It was like, oh, we're going to be doing flights with blimps. And then the Hindenburg occurred, and they were like, never mind. Yeah, like, yeah let's just look away yeah. from that and yeah. put everyone in tin cans in the sky. <laughs> I don't even know if they teach like the Hindenburg tragedy to kids anymore. I don't think so. I I feel like you have to like stumble upon that if you're like going down deep into like the the. No. the the YouTube algorithm and everything are like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is that thing on fire? You click the video. It's like, Oh yeah. Right. Happened? You're like, like shocked uh-oh. by like what you're looking at and yeah. stuff. I, I also was thinking like they, so like they, they were getting things. Howard Hughes was getting things ready mm-hmm. for uh, the world's fair. Yeah. And I think even in like the Iron Man films, like the early Iron Man's or like even um, the Captain America, uh, mm-hmm. the first one, there's a world's fair going on. And do we still do that? Like, how can we stop that? Like, what? Like, uh, pro- what, probably, what happened? Wasn't the Hindenburg at one of the world's fairs or something? I think so. I think that was for. So that was for, probably like, why they were like, mm, too many people passed. Like, let's not cool to have a world's fair. Like, you'll have like amazing. so many kids like bringing like their like random inventions, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, even just like adults and like tech companies, like startups, that would be. That would be cool if they started that over. Like, hey, we have all of this technology. Yeah, we can show you on YouTube or social media or make a documentary, but let's all get together in one place and showcase what we have. And then that's going to create more ideas for more people and it's going to continue to uh, evolve. But for whatever yeah. reason, yeah, they just said, nah, we're good. Right. Like, that was what the World's Fair was. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, like, what the – what. the the future may look like and stuff. And here's how close we're getting to it or how far away we are from it sometimes. (laughs) Because wasn't Epcot like part of that in some capacity? I don't know. I feel like that's maybe that's like, or like that was Disney's representation of like the world's fair. Like how do we do this like an everyday thing? Um, It was like showing different kind of like cultures too. That's how they do it too. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see if like something like that, like even on a small scale, mm-hmm. you're like your citywide like stuff. But I don't know. Do you, do you see that as the biggest like gripes with this movie? Is that like just the story's basic in terms of like how would you recommend this this movie or like who you would you even recommend it to anybody? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I would. I th- there's more than enough. Uh, superhero related films out there that I couldn't say, oh, hey, go check out The Rocketeer. I think maybe for someone that is a Disney film enthusiast that hadn't seen it, I would recommend it to them. Or someone looking for a really niche uh, Iron Man-esque film from the early 90s, then maybe. But to go up to somebody on the street and just start talking about movies and be like, you should check out the Rocketeer. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard to like, um, it's an enjoyable movie, but it's hard to be mm-hmm. like, all right. Like, because if you describe it to somebody, someone would be like, that's just Iron Man. Yeah. How come I just watch Iron Man? I'm like, <laughs> like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah. And everything CGI's like, better. yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's like, if you're like, if someone has like a deep interest in like film noir like style movies then then that's that's something but or like someone just loves watching jennifer connelly and like everything that jennifer connelly's in then we saw we said that about like uh like sandra bullock like all right like if you're like really into like watching sandra bullock watching everything that sandra bullock's been in then, then maybe Jennifer Connelly is one of them and stuff, and and then that's why you'll stumble upon the Rocketeer, and you probably, <laughs> everyone around you will probably be like, "What the like, hell what? are you watching?" <laughs> like, there's so many other why this. Like, yeah, so it's like I I want to know what I I want to watch the other movies that we're gonna plan to watch for this for this month mm-hmm. to even think about like all right like out of the the movies we watch for this month is the Rocketeer even 
after that, even something yeah. you still would recommend. It, it would be interesting. Or watch um, again. Yeah, or watch again. Like I'm told, like I can totally see myself just forgetting about this movie. Yeah. And like looking on Letterbox like a year ago, a year from now, oh, and be like, "Oh shit. crap!" <laughs> <laughs> like we watched it like it's here. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, here's the here's the key thing. Uh, in mm-hmm. terms of a a, a five star rating uh, mm-hmm. possibility, what'd you end up giving it? I think I was being nice <laughs> after I watched it, so I ended up giving it like a. I gave it a three, but I'm thinking two and a half, three. For my rating. Yeah, so I saw your rating after I gave my rating, and I was like, wow, mm-hmm. like he loved this movie, I guess, or like it, it was fairly mm-hmm. decent. Uh, it was, I was feeling happy at the moment, and I was like, oh, it's not terrible. Yeah, it's not terror. It's not like you're not going to want to turn off the TV and everything. Yeah. But, but yeah, with it being so simple and everything, and, and uh, I ended up giving it a two, and I was like, all right, mm-hmm. like it, there's better movies out there and stuff. There's better Disney movies out there, oh, even yeah. from back then. Uh, Watch the like, kid. The kid is amazing. Yeah, the kid. I don't, I don't Disney, remember the kid. Yeah, it came on like oh one oh two, with uh, I think Quaid was in it. That's a good movie. No, no, no. Bruce Willis is in it. Sorry. Oh, Sad, I think I remember. Funny, yeah, I think I remember. Like, yeah, so like, there's a lot of Disney movies out there that mm-hmm. like hit a lot of different emotions and like and peaks. Where this one, it's an actiony movie. But I think there's a lot of things that they did wrong, which is funny because the dude that directed this movie ends up directing the Captain America movie. Yep. He did a bunch of stuff. He did like yeah. the third Jurassic Park. I saw a couple other things. But yeah, that that's the one that surprised me was that he did Captain America. But you can see, now that we've had this conversation, you can see similarities between this and the first Captain America. I guess the style, like that, mm-hmm. the style and cinematography kind of carried over. Yeah, it's like, yeah. like it was very era. interesting to be like, man, like, and, and then he goes on to do Captain America, which instantly probably hooked a lot of people into the Marvel universe, where it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that was, I think that was the first movie. I, I saw the Iron Man movie. Patty loved the Iron Man, like the moment it came out. Yeah. But I think for me, it was Captain America, where it's like, whoa, it's like, this is cool. Um, Iron Man kind of sucks. Like, Pat is next to me. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to punch you later. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have like a fist coming through to the. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this is a, a very interesting film. And it's a, it's, it's a fun way to start uh, this kind of like not so superhero, superhero movies and stuff and, uh, for this month. Uh, but yeah, Kai, you want to take us out? Yeah. Uh, Thanks for joining us for another episode of Saturday Night Popcorn. I'm Kai. And I'm Jason. We'll be back next week with another one. And please let us know in the comments below if you've seen The Rocketeer from 1991. Uh, If you liked it, disliked it, or what you thought about it. Uh, Did you like this better than Iron Man? Uh, (laughs) uh, But yeah, so, and then please like, subscribe to Saturday Night Popcorn for more podcasts like these.